Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay. I'm the designer of Eight Gods. And Eight Gods uses this special deck of cards that has eight suits and the numbers two through six plus god cards in each suit. And I should note, by the way, that all of the art here is completely placeholder art. Ryan Laukit is doing absolutely beautiful card art for the actual deck. So Eight Gods is a two to six player competitive game, but it uses this deck of cards that exists within the Wandering Sea, which is the world of Sleeping Gods, the game that Ryan designed. And so it makes sense that in that world, just like in our world, if you have a deck of cards, people are gonna make solitaire games. So this is an example of the most common solitaire game that exists in the Wandering Sea. And the object of the game, I'll just go through the rules quickly. The object of the game is to get rid of all of the cards in your tableau. So I've just shuffled this up. I don't, I don't know what's here. And, and you pull out the eight gods at the beginning of the game. So you, you shuffle it up and you have these four columns of 10 cards each. If you want a slightly easier game, you can have five columns of eight cards each, but uh, I'm an experienced solitaire player, so I'm gonna play it like this. So the way you get rid of cards is by matching um, the two cards that are adjacent to each other in the same suit. So for instance, five and six of the same suit or five and four, those can match any two cards that are adjacent to each other in the same suit. So I will just get started playing. Now, just like normal solitaire, you can move, you can put one card onto a, a card that's one higher than it. So I can put this five on the six. I could also put this five onto that six if I wanted. I just sort of chose chose that one at random. So once you reveal the card, it gets flipped over. Okay, another five. So the other thing that you can do is you can put a card up here if it matches the suit. So a single card can go up on the gods. And once it goes up here, I can't bring this back down later. I can't bring it back down. I can only match it. So once I put this up here, I'm going to have to find the four of Zakra or the six of Zakra to be able to get rid of this. So when the game ends, you're gonna, if you manage to win, you'll get rid of all the cards in the tableau and there'll be one card on each of the gods at the end. You're trying to end up with the lowest cards possible. So a perfect game is all twos up here. But you can sort of consider it a win if you manage to just clear the tableau regardless of what gods, regardless of what cards are up here. All right, so that's basically the game. You could probably stop watching the video at this point. You, you know the rules of the game at this point. Um, but if you want to keep watching, you can see a little bit more. So uh, this is good. I can now match the six and the five. These now, it's quite tricky on Tabletopia. Um, that those cards are being stuck together. I don't know why they're stuck together card become unstuck. Okay, good. All right, so these cards match. Thank you, Tabletopia, for making this demonstration very difficult. All right, these cards match, and I can just flip them over. They're, they're done. So they're removed from the game, and then I get to flip over this next card. All right, a three. I will move this two onto this three. Flip this over. Ah, a three and a two. Now, I could match these. It's perfectly fine if I want to match these. But the problem is, if I want to go for a perfect game, I can't I can't give up this. Uh, I can't match this because then the lowest, the lowest uh, Mikra card that I would have would be a four. So I'm going to, for now, at least go for a perfect game. I'm going to put this two up here. I'm going to put this three this three tabletopia, sorry everyone, this three up there, and then I'll flip over, I'll flip over this bottom card. Wow, those cards are really sticky. Become unstick stuck cards. All right, there we go. So another three. All right, well, I'll keep going. Well, I could move this five onto this six. I'll move this five onto this six to see what I get. Maybe this will be a four and I'll be able to move it over. All right, another six, not much help. All right, I'll move this three up now, see what happens. I can, if I need to later, I can make this match, this this two with this three if I have to. All right, a four. All right, this four can go on the five. We'll do that. And if you manage to clear out a whole row, then uh, you can use that as, uh, as anything you want and you can put something in and remove it whenever you want to. Okay, so I managed to match this, this three and the four, that'll be good. These are done. 
And these are my removed cards, so I'll just put them there. All right, what did I get? A two, okay. Um, sure, I can put that two there. I could, I could put it up there also, but once I put it up, I can't take it down. So I might as well, for now, leave it here. All right, now this five and the six matched. So that's good, that was a good card. Um, what's interesting about this, if you're an experienced solitaire player, you know often there's a point at the solitaire game where you're like, ah, I got it, I won. Um, but with this with this version of solitaire, you get more constrained as these get filled up, and so even close to the end of the game, it's still there's still some tension in it, which which I enjoy. All right, now these three and the four I can match. That seems good, and now I have an open column, so I can do anything I want there. I think I'll try and put this six up there. Let's see what happens. A two, okay, I can put this two up. Between the the red two or the this light blue two, I don't know exactly, maybe if I was precisely counting cards, I would have some reason to strategize one over the other, but I don't. All right, I'll go ahead and put this two up. Eventually I do want to have all twos up here. So it's not it's not too bad that I'm that I'm finding them. All right, this four. All right, let's move this four over over here. I'm as you can tell my strategy here is to try and get try and get a bunch of rows cleared out or a bunch of columns cleared out. I did not realize this would be quite so tricky on Tabletopia. All right, let's flip this over, see what I get. All right. This two can go up, why not? Ah, so there is some there is some reason. The reason why I would want to put this two up instead of this two is because if I end up with other purple cards later, I want to have the freedom to put the purple cards up. So there is a strategic reason. I'm gonna put this two up because I see this five has already been revealed. And therefore maybe this this there's gonna be a purple in there that will give me the freedom to put that purple up. That's interesting. All right. Um, and I haven't stacked the deck, so we'll see we'll see what comes of it. Ha <laughs> ha. After all of my talk, we end up with that. Okay, so what I really want to do is I want to match. I want to match this. <laughs> you can tell I really did not. I did not plan this. Uh, the the six with this five. That's what I want to do. And to do that, I want to put. I want to put this. This. I need to get this four out of the way somehow. But but that's already taken. So hmm, what's the right thing to do? Um, if I could put this six up, then that would clear out this spot. So it may be the case that I'm feeling pretty stuck right now. Uh, all right, I can move this three over and see this three and this two can come on to the can come on to the four, and we can see what what comes of that. All right, so I'll move that three and that two over. If necessary, I can put this two up, and then I can match this three with this two. So I still have a few. I still have a few options. All right, that. Green two is not really any help, but I can still put it up and see what happens. Wow, I'm sorry for people watching this demo. All right, a three. Okay, does that help me at all? I would be happy to match this three with this four. Okay, um, but I don't really have any way of doing that. All right, so I think it's gonna have to be not a perfect game. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this two up here. Maybe if I thought about it more, there was some way to get out of that without giving up my perfect game. But I'm gonna put that two up. Then I'm gonna match the three and the two. Those are matched. And now I can match this three and the four. So those are matched. And now I can match the five and the six. So those are matched. So I gave up my perfect game, but it got me a lot of freedom to continue. All right, should I put the six up or should I put the two up? I think I'm gonna put the six up because uh, I can also put that six up. All right, I'm gonna put this six up because I have other sixes. So if I find a five, all right, the five can go over, that's fine. I'm gonna put the five on this six because that six can still go up. So we'll see. All right, a five. All right, well, I guess I'll move this five onto this six now. And then this two, should I move the two over? I gotta move something over. 
So we'll do that. And now you can see, like, there is some tension here. I could, I definitely still could lose at this point. A four onto the five. A four onto the five. This is exciting. Another four. Okay. So I think what I want to do is, well, I guess I want to put this four up. I have a choice. Do I want to put this pink four up or the blue four up? Uh, I can't put the blue four up. So I'll put this pink four up and then I'll match this four on the five or I'll put the four on the five. Ah, yeah, I'm going to. Mm. So if I match them right now, that's OK. But then I'm really giving up my perfect game because I'm going to end up then left in the deck. I'm going to have a three and a six. And I'm going to be forced to match the three with a two, and I'll end up with a six up there. And your score at the end is the, the sum of all the cards up there. So it's a little risky to do this, because then I'm giving up the ability to make that match. All right, just to keep a few more. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I guess I'll put this here and this here. I don't think it matters. All right, let's flip that. A five. A five and the six, that's what I wanted. Okay, good. So that five and that six match, great. And now I have this two. I still need to find the four for that. All right, I'm gonna put this two up because we know that needs to go up eventually. And now I guess I'm gonna move these cards over, see what happens. If I have to, I can make that match. A six, yeah. So, I would love to match that six with this five, but I don't have anything that I can do up here. All right, so um, I'll make this match, the three and the two, to clear out some space. I'll move this four over to here, and then I'll make the this match like this. Let's see what I get. The three and a two, uh, three and a four. Okay, so the three and the four can match. That's perfectly good for me. The four. Four, and now the four is actually my lowest card in Omlude because I match the two and the three. Six and the five, okay, great. So I'll match the six and the five because I wanna maximize my score there. A four, oh no, oh no! Oh, this is what I meant. Oh, I can't believe I just lost. So, I just lost because yeah, well, if you're a solitaire player, you you appreciate this moment, <laughs> this tension. Oh, I was doing so well. How many cards would have? How many cards would cause me to lose? That if there were five cards left, that would have been fine. I could have matched that. That would have been fine. I could have matched that. Come on. This one, yeah, that would have been fine. I could have put it on the three, and that would have been fine. I could have I could have matched it with the four. Oh, so sad. And if I had gotten either of these fives before this four, then I would have had a spot to put the four when it came up. Oh my gosh. All right, so that was exciting, at least for me. <laughs> I don't know if it's exciting for you. So if if this had come up slightly differently, let's say I like came up with this five first, then this four came up, and then let's say I, this three came up, I would match that. Uh, or even if at that point I would I would be guaranteed the win because if this five came up I could move this five onto the onto onto that six and then match this five and the six and then I'd have another column free and then at that point I'd be totally safe so these match and then these match and then these match so that's you know I ended up losing because I got stuck but often you can you can manage to win I would say the win rate um, the win rate's probably about sixty to 70% and the perfect game rate is maybe, win rate might even be higher, win rate might be 80%, but the the perfect game is perhaps, um, you know, one out of five. If you if you play well, I mean, there there's certainly skill involved in this, um, but it's also a little meditative if you just wanna play a meditative solitaire game without, without uh, thinking too hard. So this is an example, I came close to perfect, I missed this and this, in, in this version of reality where that four red didn't come up when it did. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please contact me on Board Game Geek or leave a comment in the Kickstarter. Thanks so much.
Also remember, all of this card art is totally placeholder. Ryan is making beautiful art.